Um, we are celebrating in the month of May Historic Preservation Month. So as we gear up for this special month where we celebrate the past and protecting the past, we thought what better way to do that than to think about the things we collect. We're going to talk about today how museums are these big old places where collections are kept, but we also have personal collections. Um, we're going to talk about our collections today, the special things for us, and we want you to really think about is there something special you collect um, if not, is there something you could start collecting? Maybe you'll get some really good ideas. So we're very lucky because we have Miss Caitlin with us here today. Caitlin actually um, works with collections all the time. That's what she does in her job. So she's going to um, help give us some ideas about how to protect our collections um, and put them in really nice storage containers in ways that we can protect them over time. So if you have questions for her, definitely start thinking about those. So to kick us off today, um, we're going to do some stretches to get us ready for story time. We've got a wonderful book. I mean, look at this cover. What a cool cover that is. Uh, Caitlin is going to show us some really cool things at the museum and some pictures and answer our questions. And then at the end, we're hoping you gathered some craft supplies to create special containers to protect your special collections. And Michaela is going to walk us through that. So, Michaela, will you show us some of your favorite stretches to get us started? Of course, of course. So, I always think it's important when we're stretching, we gotta make sure our eyes are wide awake. So, let's everybody, let's just blink, make sure our eyes are wide open. All right, next, our nose. Can you guys move your nose up and down like a little bunny? You know, up and down, up and down. What about our eyebrows? Can you move your eyebrows up and down? Get that all stretched out. And then our lips, let's push them like a fish. Good to go, excellent. All right, let's roll our shoulders. Sure, we're all ready to go. Can you reach your hands up way up to the ceiling? Almost touch the ceiling and how about way to the side? How far can you guys go? Let's just shake out our fingers. We're all ready and good to go. All right. Well, let's go ahead and listen to Meg as she reads our story. Awesome. I feel better. Thank you, Michaela. Of yeah. Course. And keep keep stretching. If you need to stretch anytime, yes. you do you. How cool. Rebecca said the word collector is one of our favorite books. Oh, Excellent. awesome. It's brand new to us. So we're we're so excited. So I'm actually going to, and if at any point um, my colleagues here are gonna tell me if you can't hear me, but I want everybody to be able to see. So let's see here. This is called the word collector. Let me see if I can. There, that's a little bit better, right? That looks good, yeah. And this is by Peter Hamilton Reynolds. And you'll see all over the front of the book, around the words here, there are so many different words in yellow. So kind of fun. Okay, so collectors collect things. Some people collect stamps. Some people collect coins. Others collect rocks. Some collect art. Some collect bugs. Others collect baseball cards. Some people collect comic books. And Jerome, what did he collect? Hmm, I wonder what Jerome collects. Jerome collected words. And right in his hand here, he has one of my favorite words, wonder. He collected words he heard. Certain words caught his attention. And he's talking to a friend here and his friend says, my trip to Peru was perfectly pleasant. Ooh, it's a fun set of words there. He collected words he saw. Certain words jumped out at him. This picture says willow and he found that word kind of exciting. He collected words he read. Certain words popped off the page. He's reading Wizard of Oz here. That's one of my favorites. And the word emerald was really exciting for him. Short and sweet words he collected. Words like spark, bloom, drift, dream. Two syllable words like treasure, motif, whisper, candid, hover, glimmer. Oh, and these ones are tough and multi-syllable words that sounded like little songs. Geometry, guacamole, kaleidoscope, wonderful symphony. Ooh, those are long words, but really beautiful words. There were words he did not know the meaning of at first, but they were marvelous to say. Aromatic, vociferous, effervescent. 
Ooh, those are tough words. There were words whose sounds were perfectly suited to their meaning. Molasses, Tyrannosaurus, Rex, Torrential, Smudge, Bellow. Oh man, those are great words. Torrential is one of my favorite words. There's a, a little kiddo, he's in a rainstorm here, and we can call that a torrential downpour. All that rain. Jerome filled his scrapbooks with more and more of his favorite words. Look at all these scrapbooks he has. Jerome's collections grew. He began organizing them. Dreamy, science, sad, action, poetic. One day, while transporting these huge stack of words, oh, what's gonna happen? Jerome slipped and the words went flying. Oh my gosh, look at all those words. They're all mixed up. Oh no, he spent so much time organizing his collection. As he began to pick them up, he noticed his collections had become jumbled. Big words next to little words, sad words next to dreamy words. Oh no. Jerome began stringing the words together, words he had not imagined side by side. Whisper, symphony, electric, peace, savor, dreams, cascading stars. Ooh, kind of sounds pretty. He used his words to write poems. He used his poems to make songs. They moved, they delighted. Look at these people, they're so excited to hear Jerome's beautiful songs. Some of his simplest words were the most powerful. And these are some conversations he's having with some friends. I understand, I'm sorry, thank you, you matter. Oh, those are really sweet words. Jerome eagerly collected more and more of his favorite words. The more words he knew, the more clearly he could share with the world what he was thinking, feeling, dreaming. One breezy afternoon, Jerome climbed the highest hill, pulling a wagon packed with his word collection. Look at all of those words. He smiled as he empties collect his collection of words into the wind. Oh, look at that, all those words flying off into the wind. He saw children in the valley below scurrying about collecting words from the breeze. Look at all these kids. Words like hope, promise, wish, liberty, all sorts of words, resilience. Oh, these are great words for right now for us to think of. Jerome had no words to describe how happy that made him. And that is the end. And in the end, there's a little poem, reach for your own words, tell the, word who you, the world who you are and how you will make it better. And that's from Peter Hamilton Reynolds. Oh, that's such a great book. Oh my goodness. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me for story time. That's a fabulous book. So as we mentioned, today is all about collecting. And some of you may collect words. I wonder if we have any poets or authors out there who just love the sound of words. But some of you may collect more tangible things, things like rocks or stamps or special flowers you find, um, all sorts of fabulous things. So we thought it would be really fun to talk about these things, these collections with a professional museum person who works with collections. So we have here, um, this is our, our colleague and our friend, Caitlin, is her name, Caitlin Sharp. And Caitlin, we would love for you to tell us a little bit about what your job is, um, you know, what kind of collections we have in the museum, anything you want to share with us to give us some ideas about what collections look like in a museum. Okay, so as Meg mentioned, my job title is called the registrar, which is kind of a weird word. Um, it's kind of a funny word, kind of connects to the, the words in the book, um, but it's really a, it's a, it's a fun job because I take care of the artifact collection. So that means that I make sure it's safe, um, but also that we have all the information that kind of um, we have about the collection, that we know what the object is, where it came from. Um, so kind of making sure we know about the artifact, but then also making sure that we take care of the artifact so it stays safe. 
Um, so that means I spend a lot of time making sure our temperatures are okay in the different rooms we share things in. I make sure that we have, um, you know, if something might be breakable, that it is in a space where it won't break. Um, so all sorts of things that we do to kind of make sure that the collections stay safe, but also that we know where they are and we know about them. So then that when we want to, we can use those collections and put them on, you know, the museum's website, use them in exhibits. Um, researchers can actually come and research our collections. So making sure the collections can be used and available and also preserving them for our history. Like Meg mentioned, it's preservation month. So it's you know, it's making sure that we have them for future generations so your children can come and enjoy the artifacts in the museum's collection. Uh, so we have all sorts of really cool artifacts at the museum. We have pottery, we have giant carriages, we have things from firefighters, we have police items, we have pretty dresses from the 1800s. So all sorts of really, really neat things that are from Colorado Springs and their history. Um, I'm actually right now in our toy vault. I wanted to show, like, show you some of the toys in our collection. So we have fun things like this little lamb that you can kind of see. So it's something like a kid. Yep, it's, you can pull it, so it's an old pull toy. But it's something that you a kid would have played with in like 50 years ago, so like the 1950s. We also have a little Humpty Dumpty. So you can kind of see a little Humpty Dumpty, which is oh, kind of fun. Nice. And also, again, a little pole toy. They really liked the pole toys back in the day. Um, <laughs> so cool. So we have all sorts of fun stuff like that. Caitlin, I heard that one of our smallest items is a shark tooth from when Colorado used to be covered in water, like forever ago. Is that true? We have a shark tooth in our oh, Yeah, we have this super, super tiny sh shark tooth. And it's actually from Red Rocks Canyon. So if any of you ever go hiking in Red Rocks Canyon, that whole area used to have, you know, oceans there. So they actually find things from like seashells there. We also have stuff from like dinosaurs. Um, we have things that are like years ago from plants. So that's the really neat thing about our collection is that you can actually go to the space today and it's completely different. But yeah, that's actually where one of our shark teeth came from. That's so cool. Awesome. So I heard you were going to share some pictures with us to show us kind of behind the scenes, what it looks like our special collections and how we protect them. Yeah, definitely. So let me yeah, Caitlin's using a function called share screen. So you all should see pop up on your screens a PowerPoint here in a minute so you can get a closer look at some of these photos. Okay. So this is kind of a little bit about what our collections areas look like, but also how we take care of the collections. Um, so whenever we move collections, we always make sure we know where we're moving to and we always use a cart. So you always make sure to move things as safely as possible um, to prevent any sort of damage. So again, so they can be preserved in the future. We have lots of different ways that we kind of preserve artifacts and storage. You can see we have some paintings there. So we actually store them like a painting would be on a wall. So that's actually the safest way to store the paintings. And we sit, sit, share, um, store them so they're back to back and front to front. So that kind of prevents things like scratching that could damage stuff. And then on the next to there, you'll actually see boxes. So we do box a lot of things, but really a lot of textiles. So like quilts, dresses, we do have historic clothing that actually was worn by children back years ago, which is really kind of fun. And that's kind of what a box might look like inside. So we don't just put a piece of clothing in there and just don't, you know, just leave it in the box. We do a lot of things with tissue um, that's special tissue that we buy to kind of pad things and put rolling things to kind of prevent folds and prevent any sort of damage. So everything we do is just to make sure it's as safe as possible to prevent anything from happening to the artifact. We also sometimes even hang dresses. Um, so you can actually see there's like a wedding dress from the 50s and a 1920s dress, but if you look closely you can see the hangers actually have padding on it. So you know your dresses that you might hang at your house they might just be directly on like a plastic hanger, but over time that can actually hurt 
the closing. So that's actually a way to kind of fill it out a little bit better and create a soft thing for the dress to kind of lay on. And we also do stuff, um, we actually put things flat. You can actually see those are flat. Um, they're like little embroideries and also some little tiny paintings that we've actually laid flat. And you can actually see as there's this, there's this weird white stuff between it. That's actually this fancy foam we buy called Epa foam that we use to kind of pad things. So it kind of keeps it safe and protected. Now I don't know if you notice my hands, but you can actually see that I have gloves on. So when we touch things, we always make sure to wear gloves because anything you touch can actually get oils and stuff on your hands on the artifact. And then when we hold things, we always try to move it from the safest point. So you might have seen earlier when I moved this little tiny clam that I didn't, you know, pull it by its wheels. I kind of cupped it in two different locations like this. So if you look at this, I show you here, you can see that they're, you know, you're kind of grabbing the teacup from the top, which might not be really safe. And then the other one, you're kind of cupping it from the bottom. So um, which one do you think might be a little safer for the artifact based on some of the things I said? Yeah, in the comments, if you think the top one is, is safer, a safer way to hold the object, put top. If you think the bottom one is a safer way to protect that special object. You can put bottom. So top or bottom, what do people think? Do we just wanna pick it up like this or pick it up like with two hands? Okay, let's see here. Oh, Sonia, Rebecca, people are saying, oh, everybody's saying bottom. So people think this is a safer way to, to protect those really special items. Is that right, Caitlin? Yep, yeah, You're because you're kind of holding it from the safest part. Um, you're kind of cupping it right underneath rather than grabbing it in the top. Because, you know, if you're grabbing it from the top, your hands could slip and it could break. So, again, always the safest thing that you do possible. Sometimes when we do things that are really big, we actually have several people actually moving things. So, you know, if it's like a table, you might have a person on each end. Sometimes even a chair if it's really big. So, you really, it's, there's a, there's a lot of little things you have to follow when you move things. Awesome. Well, Caitlin, does anyone who's joining us today have a question for Caitlin? First of all, we'd love to hear if you collect something special um, in the chat function, if you could tell us what you collect. And we'd love to get some tips from Caitlin on how we might protect those special things. So Michaela and I brought our special things we wanted to show you. I have here just a few little snow globes. Do any of you guys have snow globes at home? So they're these really pretty little things you can collect when you travel and you shake them and inside it looks like a snowy scene. So here's Pittsburgh. I have one from Los Angeles that's really special to me. And then this one is from St. Louis. You can see all the pretty sparkles in there. Caitlin, how, what's the best way for me to protect these if I wanna make sure they're around for a long time? Well, that's such a fun collection, Meg. So what you would do is whenever you move them, like I'm not sure if you have them on display or in a box right now, but what I would do is obviously when you move things, make sure to use two hands and always move them from the bottom. Um, also, another thing you do if you ever move them, if you have any sort of tissue paper or Kleenex or even paper towels, you can actually wrap them up because you really want to protect that glass from getting scratched. Um, or even broken. So it's really important to kind of make sure you keep that safe. Okay, so tissue paper and then just being gentle with how I care. Gentle, it. yeah. Oh, Rebecca just shared, they just moved here from St. Louis. Awesome. Yep, I've got my little St. Louis snow globe here. You can see the little snow going on in there. Awesome. So does anybody at home have collections they want to share with us? Sometimes we don't even realize we're collectors. I think that's kind of funny. Um, Michaela, what were you talking about? She said she's been looking out at nature a lot because we're, we're at home. So looking out her window, who else did you notice are collectors, Michaela? So I have quite a few squirrels and birds in my backyard. So I watch the squirrels, if they find little bits and pieces of um, like foam or some of the birds, like some shiny things, like things with like shiny wrappers, I'll watch them and they'll pick them up. So a lot of times animals will use this to um, add to their nest or sometimes they're using it to try and attract a mate so that way they can um, you know continue 
uh, going on in there, but it's really interesting when you watch them, they'll sometimes not just pick up one item, they'll pick up like five or six items and try to like stuff it in their beak or they'll try to stuff it in their mouth and you just kind of watch them and they just kind of keep grabbing whatever, you know, fit, whatever they're interested in. Sometimes they'll pick up one thing and they'll kind of think about it and then they'll find something else and they'll drop that thing and they'll pick up the other thing. <laughs> think that one's more interesting. So it's kind of interesting just to watch them go around just trying to find their favorite thing to do. But um, obviously they'll collect uh, anything shiny. Crows like to collect a lot of shiny things. Squirrels like to do things like foam or stuffing. It creates a good insulation for their nests. Um, so that so way cool. during the winter, you know, they don't get cold. So it's a lot of fun. Awesome. So guys, be sure when you're outside or looking out your window, see how animals are collectors as well. Um, we've got a lot of great collections people shared. So we are collectors of Lego, but that doesn't require extra protection. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So Legos, um, Pokemon cards. That's a good yeah. one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, rocks. We love rock. rocks. Rocks. Rocks, are seashells, fossils, Ooh, fossils. Stickers. Ooh, I love this. Coasters. And then oh, they have a family neat. shell collection. What oh, that's so, neat. do you want to share what you might do for some of those? Maybe the, the Pokemon cards and the rocks. What are some suggestions you have for those, Caitlin? So for the Pokemon cards, you can actually buy really cool like page protectors. Mm. So like you might have seen these a lot with like baseball cards and you can actually put them so they're each in like their own individual little like pocket almost and then they can be in like a binder. So it's a lot of protection because they're not going to get crushed from the side because they have like cardboard but then they have the little tiny little sleeve protectors that kind of protect each one individually. Awesome. And for rocks there's like lots of really cool boxes you can do so like you know you can do something really simple like a box with like some sort of foam you might find. Like, you know, if you ever get any sort of packages from Amazon or any sort of shipping, really you can save that packaging. Like there's always sorts of fun bubbles and foam and sometimes like that tissue paper that you get in there. And you can kind of make your own storage with that. Um, and again, just like keeping things contained in boxes is always a really good way to do things. Well, and I think Caitlin makes a good point. You, you know, at the museum, we often have to buy really special like tissue paper and boxes. Um, but at home, you don't have to buy fancy things. You can use the stuff around your house. I know I have a collection that I've stored in a um, an old uh, Kleenex box because it's a really good size box to store things in. So just using things around home to protect those special items is absolutely fine as well. Um, another person say we collect pressed pennies as well as we, when we travel or go to new places. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love too, Caitlin and Michaela, that people, a lot of these things, um, their collections from when people go on adventures, right? They travel to a new place or, um, you know, are out on a hike or something and they're collecting these really special items. So I think that helps us understand why these things are so important to us because they, they have memories. When that family looks at their beautiful shell collection, they think about the last time they were at a beach and can dream of the next trip to the beach that they might take. So there's a lot of memories and emotions that we um, have with these special collections. Well, on that note, I want to thank Caitlin so much. Does anyone have any final questions for her before we let her get back to work at the museum? She's got a busy day ahead of her protecting our special items. Awesome. Oh, we collect Legos too. I like this. I like this. Well, Caitlin, thank you so much. If any questions come up, Caitlin, Michaela and I will be sure to share those with you later. Um, but thank you so much, and, and we hope you have a great day. Great. Thank you for letting me join you. Yes. Bye. So um, we're going to head move into our craft here in a moment, but I wanted to share with you um, on this message of traveling. On April 25th, we have our next Children's History Hour. We've actually invited um, a local children's author and teacher named Christy Howard. She's going to read her book called Moffat Meets a General. So it's all about General William Jackson Palmer, who made this city, who founded our city. And we're going to read her book and then talk about what he and his family collected on their travels. So I'm excited. I get to go to the museum. We're being very safe and practicing social distancing, but um, we have a few of us there every now and then. So I'm going to take you on a tour of the Palmer exhibit. And then at the end, Michaela has a really special um, craft we're going to do. We're going to make postcards and imagine if we were to take a trip, what we might collect on our trip. So come back on April 25th for our next Collecting Counts story time, um, and, and we'll focus on this new topic of Palmer and his family. 
Oh, it looks like here. Thank you, Caitlin. We appreciate the information. Oh, we collect national park stamps. A lot that of great fun. Collections. I like that one. Awesome. Well, I'm going to let Michaela take it away. She's got some really cool ideas for us. Yes. So um, you can use, like Meg was saying, you can use anything pretty much to store your collection. And so Meg made a very good point. You can use a tissue box. You could use a shoe box. Um, you could even use uh, the next time you order out something and you get those styrofoam containers that you put your food in. That's also great too. It's got that uh, the natural um, foam around it. So that way it kind of protects it. and You don't have to worry too much about it. But what I'll be doing today is I'm going to be using an egg carton. So uh, egg cartons are really good for smaller items. So maybe stamps, pennies, rocks. Um, I actually have one of my rock collections inside of another one that I have. So with this, you have endless possibilities in terms of how you can decorate this. You can use stamps, markers, colored pencils, paint, however you guys want to do it. Um, today I'm going to do mine with some paint and some buttons. I just found a whole jar of buttons when I was looking for some paint earlier and I thought, hey, why not just go ahead and glue these on and have fun with it. So um, with this, we can do whatever you want. Now on one of the ones that I've done, and I'll show you one that I this was my original one that I did. I decided to paint the whole entire container. So as you can see, I've got my rocks on it because I wanted to make sure I knew what was in my collection box. Um, but I decided to paint the whole entire container. And then if you open it up, I have got the inside painted as well, along with my rock collection. So this other rock, this other container that I'm gonna do. I don't know yet what I'm going to put in it. So sometimes that's kind of nice too, just to have a container and you have no idea what you're going to collect yet, but you want to just have something just so that way you're ready to get started. So for mine, I'm just going to take some black paint, make sure I shake it really good, have a paintbrush with mine, and I'm probably just going to put on there my collection, just so that way I know. Because that way I don't have to give it a title yet. I don't have to say if it's for rocks, if it's for stamps, action figures. It really doesn't matter. So However you want to paint it, however you want to decorate it, again, you don't have to use paint, you don't have to use color pencil, you can use marker, um, whatever you have around the house. You could even put construction paper and maybe cut it out and then glue it on top of there and then write it with marker if that's a little bit easier. Uh, I think it'd be fun too, Michaela. Yeah. People will cut out, like if you have magazines or old calendars, you could cut out oh. and glue, like you could make almost like a collage. That'd be really pretty to cut out. That's a perfect shape. idea. Yeah, especially for those collections where you're traveling all over the world, you could like take little like pictures from like oh cool um, where that you've gone for like the pennies and stuff. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. So I I'm think just... a paint a uh, egg carton is the perfect storage container. Especially you, you could put Legos in there, stamps. You could put rocks. All these things you guys mentioned. I don't think Pokemon cards would fit, but you might be able to get creative. I don't know. <laughs> you could maybe. I know that they have some of those egg cartons that fit like 24 <laughs> eggs in it. So maybe you could fit them in there if you like laid them sideways or something. So. That's the neat thing is when you have a collection, you can collect anything, baseball cards, baseball caps, you can collect um, pop bottles, you can do stamps, like some people were saying, and there's an endless possibility of things that you can collect, whatever catches your fancy. One thing I love to collect are music boxes. Um, so whatever you love to collect, you collect it and it doesn't matter how, what it is, as long as you love it. Um, then you should collect it. And just like you can be creative with your collection, you can be creative with the way that you um, take care of it as well to make sure it stays around for future generations. That way you can always see it. So as you guys are kind of just like finishing this, whatever you want to do, um, again, you can do stickers, you can do buttons, you can do collage. Make had a great idea with that one. I love the collage bit. That one be really nice and colorful at that point. Um, so I've really just kind of done a really quick little spelling of collections. Um, and with this, you can do the inside. When you paint it, just make sure that you guys allow it to dry before you decide to um, open it up or turn it anyway, because what I have learned the hard way is that it'll get all over your fingers, it could get all <laughs> over your, your table. So just make sure everything's dry before you go ahead. So I've done like a very plain my collections. Perfect. What I'd wanna do then is you can use glue or anything else. So I've got several, several different buttons right here. Ooh. So I'll probably just stick them on however I want to, whatever catches my hand, however I like that, just like I did with the stickers. Oh, so that's so cool. Like all the way around. I literally just picked out any that were neat. I've got stars, I've got butterflies, I've got a whole bunch of different things. So 
however you guys want to decorate it, go for it. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's probably just as much fun as collecting something as well, just to decorate <laughs> it. So, um, but yeah, guys, whatever you want to do on that, it's do you have any other ideas, Meg, of what you could put a collection in? I don't, I mean, I was thinking, yeah, like a Kleenex box would be good. I think, um, especially because a lot of us are ordering things online right now. I know if you can't go out and shop, um, Amazon um, will include that special uh, bubble wrap, um, different tissue types of papers. So saving those things to protect your collections would be a really good idea as well. Um, oh, we collect hockey cards. Man, Susan, your family collects a lot of really cool things. <laughs> you do. So yeah, I think you just get creative and you find what works best for you. And um, again, the goal, just like at a museum, is to keep these things safe. They're so special to us. We love them. We collect them. Uh, they give us special memories and feelings. So if we want to keep those things safe, that's why we wanted to give you some clues, some ideas to keep your collection safe. So um, I think that about wraps up our program. Yeah, um, I want to thank Michaela again. I want to thank Caitlin for joining us. Thank you to everybody for sharing your ideas. That was so cool to hear about all the things you collect. How fun. Um, if you end up making a really special way to collect, um, to protect your collections, if you make a storage container, we would love if you would send us a photo. Um, you can post it on our Facebook page. That would be awesome. I'm also going to include our um, email address here. So it's COS Museum at coloradosprings.gov. And we would love to see a photo of what you made. It would be really cool. Um, but yeah, thank you all for joining us. And again, come back on April 25th. I also have to mention this weekend, this program um, that we're doing this weekend is good for upper elementary and middle school. It's called Think Like an Archaeologist, Saturday the 18th, um, starting at 10 a.m. And it's also a Zoom program that you have to register for. But our city archaeologists have offered to do a program to talk about what their jobs are and to help you look at the world the way an archaeologist would. So again, better for upper elementary and um, middle school. But if you're interested, come back and join us. We're trying to keep you all busy with lots of exciting digital programs. So if you have any great ideas, let us know. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. And we hope everybody's well. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye.